we are given an m into an integer matrix and we need to go through the elements in a spiral order and return the result so with the help of an example let's look at how the spiral traversal works the spiral path starts from the indices 0 0 that is the first element after visiting a cell we can store the value in the result and we can empty the cell so that later on we can identify this cell as already visited from here we will be moving towards the right direction we know that in a matrix in order to move in any four directions we need to add some value to either i or j index so in order to move in the right direction we must add 0 and 1 to the i and j indices respectively in this case the next i and the next j will be 0 and 1 so we will move to the indices 0 1 after noting down the value we will continue moving in the same direction from cell 3 we cannot move forward in the same direction because the next cell is out of the matrix therefore at this point we need to take a right turn to form a spiral since we are currently moving in the right direction after taking a right turn we will be moving downwards that is the values to be added to the i and j indices are 1 and 0 respectively so for moving down we will add 1 and 0 to i and j indices now the next i and next j are 1 and 2 so we will move to the indices 1 2 Similarly, we will be taking right turns at cell 9 and cell 7. At cell 4, we can see that the next cell in the same direction is already visited. So we cannot move forward in that direction. So from there, we will take a right turn again. At cell 5, we cannot move forward in the same direction because cell 6 is already visited. So again, we will take a right turn. Now here, even after taking a right turn, we cannot move forward in that direction because cell 8 is also already visited so therefore we can stop here and this is the final result we have now let's take one more example here in this case after reaching cell 3 we cannot move forward because the next cell is out of the matrix therefore we will take a right turn from this cell but even after taking a right turn, the next cell is out of the matrix. Therefore, we can stop here and this is the final result. Now let's code the solution. We will store the number of rows and columns in these variables. We will be storing the result in this variable and at last we will be returning it. We will start from the first cell 0, 0. So we will set both i and j to 0. Since we will be in the right direction initially, we will set the direction i and direction j to 0 and 1 respectively. We will use an infinite while loop to go through the matrix. During each loop, we will first add the current element to the result. And since we have visited the current element, we will empty the cell by setting it to none. We need the indices of the next cell. So we will add the direction indices with the current indices and store it in these variables. To check whether a cell indices are inside the matrix and not yet visited, we will write a separate function. Now we will check whether the next indices we are about to visit are inside the matrix and not yet visited. If yes, then we can use those next indices. So we will be setting it to i and j. Else we need to take a right turn from the current cell. One interesting thing to note about taking right turn is that we can deduce a formula for updating the direction indices. Here from the table we can see that the direction index i after taking a right turn is equal to the direction index j. And the direction index j after taking a right turn is equal to the negative direction index i. So we can write this statement for taking a right turn. After updating the direction indices, we add it to the respective cell indices. And also we need to check whether we are able to move forward after taking the right turn. If not, then we have already reached the end and therefore we can break the loop. Now let's try running the program. It's working. See you in the next video.